Wow. This is so nice. You you have such a calming energy as well, Claire. So I'm really I was really excited to get to this evening. Like this is my self care. Um, Sam, who's one of our ladies, was um, putting a poll in this morning about how you know all the all the ladies with mummers like like mums. How do you invest in your self care? And I was like, for me, it is it is spiritual practices like this and just like meditating and you know just sort of connecting with myself so you're my self-care today Claire. <laughs> yay I did a stop drop and meditate yesterday in the middle of my hallway I couldn't find anywhere in the house where anybody would leave me alone so I was like right we'll stop dropping here <laughs> that was great I, love that. I need an emergency meditation <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, um, hey, Sarah. Hey, Joe. Hey, Sam. Um, we should definitely have Ruman on shortly as well. But okay, I just, I've just we'll got to remind her. So we'll there, there may be some more coming through. We'll give it a couple of minutes. Should we do a quick intro round? Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Sam. Would you like to say hello and introduce yourself? Hello, um, I'm Sam. I'm a moon mentor um, and I'm currently working on a group program for busy mums that need more self-care. Oh, wow. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Jo? Hi, ladies. I'm Jo. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Still getting over the after effects of bloody COVID. <coughs> Sorry, that's disgusting. Um, I am a happiness hustler and I'm an empowerment coach, basically helping teenagers and women be empowered and be who they are supposed to be. And it's kick ass and I love it. Love it. It's all thanks. about self love and self care. But yeah, thank you, ladies. Nice to be here. Um, Ruman, thanks for joining us. Do you want to, are you there? Pop on and say hi. I am here. I am. Sorry, I'm just putting the babies to sleep. Oh. Hi, everyone. Hi. Do you want to say who you are and what you do? Um, yeah, so I'm Roman. Um, I'm a new coach. I'm just starting out um, and been working with Beck for and Sarah for 10 weeks, maybe. <laughs> Wow, I love it. And Sarah, Beck, um, thank you. It's absolutely amazing to be here. Um, we're going to be talking about how to double your business with Quantum Flow. And when Rebecca or, or even Sarah shared with you that I was coming today, what was your immediate thought? What did you think? I've got to be there. I've got to hear what this woman has to say. Where did that come from? And does anybody want to share a specific intention, something that they want to walk away with after this presentation? Because if you don't share, I'll just go on my on my my little quantum. Yeah, I was going to say, Sam, you're very woo woo like me, so you're you're totally and Ruman as well, actually. Yeah, I, I sorry, Joe, I don't know, I'm not sure about you to to the extent of the woo, but um, but yeah, <laughs> Joe's woo. <laughs> I I saw it on um I think it was Rebecca's Instagram stories um mm -hmm. before it was posted in the um the Facebook group and as soon as I saw it on the stories I was just like oh that sounds really interesting mm -hmm. um so yeah so then I went to the group to see if I could find out when it was well I'm gonna take you on a journey I'm gonna take you on a journey today so I will share my screen Oh, to the right place, you're going to get a little view of just how many tabs I have open at one time. Take this to the right place. That's always like a visual representation of my mind, Claire, when there's multiple <laughs> tabs open. <laughs> but it's in a positive way, right? It's like us women, we can, we can change Multi the world with that multidimensional yeah. presence. Definitely. I think. I'm particularly so excited about this, Claire, because I think um, I resonate a lot with your story. Obviously, I, I don't know if you're, you're, I'm assuming you'll go into this a little bit, but just, 
about anything is possible that's what I love like coaches all I mean and it's, it's really interesting isn't it that all of us have very common themes and missions around mm -hmm. empowering women to women to really believe that anything is possible for them after a lifetime of conditioning that when you've been told that it hasn't okay. so I think for me I am just so excited any opportunity to tap into that limitless potential that is us um I'm really excited about that. Sarah, how do you feel about this, Sarah? Because just, sorry, side note, Claire, but Sarah is like, wasn't very woo-woo for a long time. I've kind of like dragged her over to the dark side. Um, no, the, the, the light, light side, side, even, <laughs> should I say, actually. Yes, I brought her towards the light. Um, and actually, she's far more intuitive than I am now. Mm. <laughs> sorry, are you there still, Sarah? It's opened up into like the psychic vibe that I've obviously... You're, you're down the rabbit hole now, aren't you? Tarot yeah. cards. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love my cards. I just think they're so good for like your guidance. But I think intuitively, mm. over the last like year, it's just been a whole vibe for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it always happens at the right time. Yeah. I was shared on um, Facebook actually the other day that these traumas that we have, they come up as we rise in our consciousness. Obviously, the consciousness of our higher self is an entity where every single experience can happen through us. At that true spirituality, that true neutrality, which means we have to confront some of the things that have happened in our past that have created an identity. And that is the identity that we are today. And it is so far apart than, apart from what is possible. But that possibility it's not potential, it's potentiality because there's a risk that we won't follow through. There's a risk that we won't take the opportunities. It's a risk that we won't see or hear or embrace the signs because we will take action from this identity that we are in the present that has been built from the past, that carries those fears, that carries those worries, that carries those beliefs. 95% of your day is in automation. Automated reactions, automated thoughts, obviously automated body functions to keep us alive. Thank you, heart. All built, this operating system has been built from your story. And what I discovered as I climbed from a business that I just couldn't even, I mean, I couldn't even charge $30 for a coaching session and get a client. <laughs> like that, that was the reflection of what was going on inside me, right? So climbing from there to multiple six figures, I discovered the gold is in your story and that there's a very specific intentional way that you can share your story online to connect with your ideal clients. Nobody's going to teach you a more simple method than me to storytell on social media, especially on Facebook, because Facebook is a gold mine for the personal story formula. And it's a platform that not many people know how to monetize which gives you a lot of space on Facebook to be visible and you know, make your business thrive. But I'm not gonna necessarily be talking about that tonight. I'm going to be talking into what you actually need to get visible, what you need to double your business, what you need to be in true authenticity with who you are, your soul goal. And that gold is in your story. So tonight you're gonna to discover my proven armor process that will double your business. The five proven emotional hacks that you can use daily to vibrate at the frequency of your vision. Now, Rebecca and Sarah have used the words woo-woo. Like there is a shitload of science behind our woo-woo right now. It is a scientific fact that our woo-woo is creating more money and more success and more impact than other people's non-woo-woo. So we want to love on our woo-woo <laughs> and we want to embrace that science and know how to apply it to our businesses 
as healers, as practitioners, as coaches, we can have a huge impact on people, but that starts within ourselves. So I'm going to help you to understand why you're hitting glass ceilings in your success, your reach, your exposure, your money, and what you can actually do. And we're going to do a task together that you can do here with me and then take away and keep using as well. So who am I? I am Claire Williamson, full circle. I am a quantum soul goal coach. I am a mum. This is my tribe. Um, I lost my little dog last year, but he gets to stay in the picture because he's still with us in spirit in every moment. <laughs> I'm a multi six figure coach and I built my business actually through COVID. So when everybody else's businesses were falling down, mine was standing up because everything is possible. And there are no limits, there are no walls apart from the ones that the mind creates. And I realized that during COVID. I saw how everybody, including myself, reacted to this external reality in a way that was just their programming. And a lot of people fell down to that programming. They gave up. It was too hard. There was too much fear, too many obstacles. Whereas I did the opposite. I was like, well, hello, Pandora's box. COVID was the beginning of my deep healing of some of the things I'm going to talk to you about tonight that will be affecting your quantum flow. So I've built six multi six figures with no ad spend. Everything has been through social media, principally Facebook. Um, I can generate 100 to 150 leads per month using the personal story formula. So the personal story formula helps women like you, women with a soul goal, soul fired up businesses to leverage their story and create more income and impact. And to do that, we have to heal the wounds. You have wounds in there that make you feel a certain way when you think about, start getting visible. The higher you climb in your business, the more that anchor to the past starts to stir up that pond muck. And what happens is people just feel all the discomfort of it and they play to the stories. They play to the reality that they see in front of them instead of realizing you're creating that reality through what you believe. Everything you see in your world right now is a mirror to who you are and what you believe. And if you can change your perception, you will change your entire life, which means you will change other people's lives. So your transformation in your business starts within you. It's an internal transformation. And I specifically support the somatic journey of trauma release. And we activate this profound identity shift so that you actually vibrationally become a magnet to what you want. Because yes, there's strategy, but as my clients, Joe actually is in my accelerator, we've just started a challenge where I'm challenging them to spend six hours a day in what we call integration. So while everybody else is out there hustling, doing, I've asked my people to just be and see what happens. Because if you have a solid strategy and you follow the strategy and you're coachable and the strategy is effective, it's worked for a lot of people. I sort of put it out there. Who do you trust more? Who do you trust more or what do you trust more to attract success to you is it the thoughts that spin around your head and the vibration attached to them all day long or is it just spaciousness complete space I know what I trust more so that's me mum of three um I'm an ex-Muay Thai fighter my my trauma my um 14 years chronic anxiety actually following a rape took me into the sport where I there was a lot of reasons a lot of self-punishment a lot of hiding in the gym because I could spend my entire life in fight camp and you know never leave the gym and also fighting myself I was never fighting an opponent in that ring I was always just fighting myself and it was a very unhealthy time for me um, I learned a lot and I bring a lot of that um, I guess, character into my coaching as well. I'm not going to let you fall down. I'm going to help you to take the punches, but I'm going to help you to weave and, and dip and slip and everything else, right? So, but um, again, that was an identity that was unhealthy. 
So we're going to talk into your identity today, what might be unhealthy for you. And principally, we're going to talk about your feelings. Because every single feeling has an emotional vibration attached. What is quantum flow? Quantum flow is when you are in a, a high vibrational state at a cellular level. You hear people talk about flow. Quantum flow is right down to the, the energy, the ATP of your cells, which means that quantum flow includes your entire well being, what you eat, what you consume um, in terms of media, relationships. Quantum flow is, is, is everything because every single feeling that you have every single day has a vibration attached to it. So feeling tired, low vibration, feeling stressed, low vibration, feeling frustrated, low vibration, feeling scared, anxious, low vibration, feeling dramatic. Oh my God, this thing just happened to me. Did you see this over here? Oh my God, like has a low vibration. Anger has a really, really low vibration. So if you're really honest with yourself and you just step out of yourself for a moment and, and observe back in to maybe how you spend your day and how you react to things, 60 to 70% of your day, I can guarantee is in a lower vibration than the resonance of the vision that you want. If you see into that life where you're succeeding, where everything is happening easily, where you have that success you've dreamed of. There's ease, there's peace, there's bliss. There's none of this shit going on. You're in a high vibration. So my coach Claire, taught me. Sorry, Claire, sorry. I just had a question on that as you were yeah. saying it because I was just quite interested what your take is. But when you say like things like anger, um, to me those are big emotions and you can feel those in a room like when you walk into a room and somebody's <laughs> had an argument or something along those like the baby and it's so interesting to me that those are vibrationally low frequency because for me when I feel like my dream life it's all about being like calm relaxed like in flow to me that feels like that would be low vibration because it's not all the stress that, and the noise that, and the da -da. Um, it's, it's interesting frequency. isn't it it doesn't seem right <laughs> So just, just, but how do these emotions feel? Do they feel heavy or do they feel light? Uh, well, the, the obviously dream life just feels light, airy, like amazing in flow. Um, every, all the, the trauma and the other stuff. Yeah, I, so it's like weighing you down. You mean like heavy like that? It's heavy. And so yeah. if you're, it's closer to matter than it is to energy. Yeah. So that when we're in pure consciousness, we're closer to energy than we are to matter. How does, in quantum physics, something become form? How does something become matter? We see it. We put, we put our focus on it. That's how, yeah. that's, how we, that's how this cup is a cup. Yeah. So that is where something becomes, um, you know, and, and that is where those low frequency emotions drag you down closer to matter. So you fixate on that in like the internal reality like, dense. yes it's dense Absolutely. heavy yeah okay that's such a great way to differentiate because I've always just wondered that myself like that doesn't really make sense to me because it feels like they're big huge um emotions but actually like you say it's they're dense they're heavy so that's they that's have a difference. hurt okay so if you think yeah. about everything has a hurts mm. those yeah. high frequency emotions have um a higher a higher a higher hertz and they they vibrate faster which means they're closer to energy which means they're in coherence with the universal energy we're going to dig into a little it's it's yeah yeah thank you yeah so um yeah my coach taught me because i came to my coach with I, i'm a transformational coach but i could not see my own blueprint when it came to money I was like I knew that it was negative I knew that I had limiting stories and beliefs but I couldn't quite put my finger on what the hell was creating this scarcity that I had so I went to him because I'd had 
I'd had a level of success and actually that level of success had made me more fear, fearful. I had money sitting in my bank and I was shitting myself going to a coffee shop to buy a coffee. And it was a horrible feeling. I was fearing having this money. My husband walked into me one day and he said, um, Claire, I don't, I don't mean to, you know, worry you or anything, but there's only six dollars in our bank account. And I could see him looking at me like, you've got like six figures in your business. Why is there six bucks in our bank account? And I was so embarrassed. I had to admit to him that I, I just had not transferred it across <laughs> because I was scared. I had, a, I had this story with money that to me meant if it was out of the business and in our personal hands, it, I, I was going to lose it. And I was terrified. And my coach said to me, and, and this is bringing emotion up for me because this changed my life. He said, Claire, worrying is praying. You're actually asking for everything that you don't want through your energy because of the fear. It can only be matched. The universe can only give us more of what we're emitting through our, through our frequency. So if you're worrying about money, you're going to call in more things to worry about money. If you are feeling unlovable, you're not going to get loved. And to understand that you are a mirror in that way will change your life. And I absolutely love Joe Dispenza. He, he has become my God. <laughs> Um, and this quote speaks so deeply to me. It says, we cannot create a new future by holding on to the emotions of the past. When you start to realize that those emotions that you are having, they are just the emotions that you know. They are just what has been programmed into you by your parents, by experiences, by school, by all any experience. They are not yours. And they are making you have this death grip on how things are, the familiar, because it makes you feel safe, but it's creating a predictable future. React in the same way, you'll get the same thing. Safe only equals the same. And that to me was one of the things that helped me to cross the line, to start to make some changes in my life because suddenly the fear of what I might lose if I didn't sort my own shit out, started to burn it really started to burn because I had actually got to this place where I was like wow I can be a globally acclaimed coach I can write a best-selling hay house book I can do all of these things but not while I am in this internal state I have to sort this out so what was I sorting <laughs> so these little cute little beings right here are naked me and naked brother in the bath I am about um six years old brothers um about two there I think and was smiling away the babysitter took this photo <laughs> um we didn't have a good time growing up my mum has bipolar and she she really struggled to handle life, actually. So for mum, everything was a drama. So I've done a lot of taking myself into little old Claire's, little, you know, little baby Claire's eyes and seeing what I used to see through her eyes to understand why I believed that the world was so unsafe. Because she reacted to everything. She reacted with violence a lot. She has beaten me and my brother multiple times. She has ignore like let left us to our own devices a lot and in amongst all of that my dad um, was a very successful businessman so he had multiple businesses and he wasn't there very much and through little Claire's eyes what I saw in my dad was a hero because he brought all this you know safety and security back into the the home in terms of material things and being fed and all of that. And he wasn't there very much, but he was doing, he was doing good, right? Working for something, making money. Well, that suddenly was a really good thing. 
When I was 11 years old, my dad walked into the lounge where me and my brother were jumping on the couches. I remember it like it was yesterday. We're jumping up and down. We're really giggling to ourselves because we weren't allowed to jump on the couches. So we're jumping around, having some fun, and in walks my dad, followed by my mum, my nan, and they all have stone cold looks on their faces. I thought somebody had died. And they said, kids, we need to tell you something. You're not going to understand it. But tomorrow we're moving out of this house and we're going to go and live somewhere else. Um, and it's going to be amazing. We're going to move you into a new school. You're going to make lots of new friends. And that's it. <laughs> and they both walked, all walked out. And, you know, we were just left with this, this, this um, complete, you know, what do you do with that information? Well, as an 11 year old and, and an eight year old, you jump back on the couches and start jumping around. We, we didn't really understand what we'd been told. But from that moment forward, everything changed. We lost our big house. We did move into a caravan. Dad didn't come with us. My dad stayed in the house. And what I know now is he literally worked himself to suicide to try and hold on to that material thing for us. He tried everything to save his multiple businesses, but he lost everything. And things got worse for, for me and James because mum got more stress. She was now on her own. My nan was with us, but, you know, my mum was in a complete mess. Things got so much worse. And I, I know now that I began to see how you could lose something so easily, how success can be ripped away, how if you, if you get successful, actually, that's the only outcome. It does go away, you know, from an energetic level, from a belief level. And this started to really show up in my business. I feared success more than I feared failure. And I didn't believe that money was readily available. I believed that it was hard to make, that it was scarce, that you have to work for it. So this was an identity. This was my identity. That was on a business level. On an energetic level in my life, I also, just like my mum, reacted to everything. I had to find a story for everything. I couldn't just be good. Hey, Claire, how are you? Oh, I'm great, but my foot hurts. Oh, how are you today, Claire? Oh, I'm great, but, oh, you know, didn't sleep very well last night. What the fuck? I started to notice these things around myself. I was like, I create these stories that, that I then have to overcome. I also, obviously, I've talked about the, um, the money thing. My reactions to things were also very hot. I was very hot-headed. I would go from zero to hero really easily. My nervous system was absolutely just crashed. My little children would make a squealy sound and I would just completely erupt like I was being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, like massive fear reaction from God knows what place. I, um, I'm just looking at my little list of how I, how I used to react to give you a good picture. Another thing was that I also always felt that I was the subordinate. I always felt like I was wrong. I, I didn't feel like I had freedom of, of expression, of speech. I also was scared to death of creativity because when I was little like this and I was a kid, I was trying things out, I was exploring, I was experimenting. I was also looking after my brother most of the time. When mum came back from wherever she was and saw what we'd done, it was always a massive reaction. And so I started to understand that creativity, experimenting things, trying things new was absolutely terrifying because you get beaten for it. So I couldn't in my business even get to this place. I just kept hitting these walls when it came to creating new courses, putting things out there, you know, freedom, like freedom of speech, believing in something, saying it on the Internet. Oh, my God, the fear of actually going live and sharing something because I feared that I would be told that I was wrong. And that was terrifying on an energetic level because of all of these old stored emotions, it's not terrifying for me to put something to you and say, you know, well, this is what I believe. But from the place of the past, from the memories of the past and from the memories of the in my body, stored in my body, in the nervous system, it is really, really scary. And so my business was constantly contracting. I was trying to expand it. I was trying to push. I was, you know, paying coaches, but just finding myself, I guess, shrinking not really doing the strategic things like they, they told me I should do, bending things so that they felt comfortable and wondering why I was having no success.
So you can do exactly the same thing. You can become an observer as Joe Dispenza teaches us. You can step out and you can look back in and you can say, what are my um, reactions in the moment, every moment? Are they reactions from the place of this person I am becoming, who is in flow, at ease, in peace, money is just raining down, I have beautiful relationships, I have freedom to travel, I'm helping people, or are you reacting from those stories of the past? Are you reacting from those old identities? Are you reacting in ways that you've been taught to react? There are four states of consciousness, and this is where manifestation comes in. This is how you manifest what you want. You have to raise your level of consciousness because in that bottom square is the victim mentality. It is the life is happening to me. In fact, every situation is happening to me. The conversation I had that was a little bit confrontational, that just happened to me. That client that just said, no, that's happening to me. That situation where you're going live, maybe you do a 30 day Insta challenge and you don't get any leads, that's happening to me. Low, low, low vibrations through your reactions to it. When you start to raise consciousness a little bit, you go, oh, hang on a minute. And I had this moment too. I've just traveled to Florida to be in a reality show where I had been offered $75,000 of coaching for free. That was the prize in this reality show. I put the tickets on a credit card. I was like, this is my saving grace. This is going to be the thing that finally starts to bring my business into profit. I'm going to get the help that I need so desperately. And then I lost the reality show and I'm sat on this plane on the way home, looking out of the window, tears streaming out of my face going, oh, now we're completely screwed. I've just put those flights on a credit card we can't afford. I have to go back and tell my husband that's another thing I've tried that hasn't worked. And I'm sat there just feeling this powerlessness. And I suddenly realized it. I am the source of my abundance not the $75,000 worth of coaching, not the coach that's going to give it, not this thing over here, me. I am going to finally. No, darling, could you shut the door? Thank you. Go down to bed. Sorry. <laughs> I. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I am the source of my abundance. Life happens by me. This is a substantial raise in consciousness and everything energetically starts to change within you because you start reacting differently and you start taking different action and you start creating different feelings. But you then become a little bit in control of things. You start to hustle because you're trying to make things happen by force because you then start to play to those old programmings that tell you productivity makes, creates results. Doing more creates more. You start to play into those old stories again. So yes, you've had a rise in consciousness, but you're still in a lower frequency because of the hustling, because of the control, because of the forcing. So what happens next is we rise to the next level of consciousness. Usually when we realize, ah, there must be an easier way. I can actually allow things to happen through me where we then go on that trauma release journey where we start to neutralize some of those negative emotions from the past so they don't keep coming up as triggers in the present. Imagine being in a conversation where somebody's throwing abuse at you and you can just go, I'm absolutely fine and this isn't triggering anything in me and this is not about me at all. Can you imagine the difference rather than, oh my gosh, this is really triggering everything I don't believe about myself, all of my insecurities, all of my self-esteem. You start to see where you've wasted so much energy in the past. If you think about those eight, that ATP in your cells, like a check, and you've got these checks to, it's like you've been giving these checks away for nothing in return. Whereas when you start to give positive, high vibrational energy out into the universe, and that starts to get reflected back because there is a law of circulation, and it is absolutely true. When you start to give in positive, energy that energy comes straight back and ultimately there is an ultimate level of consciousness pure consciousness that I'm not there yet 
life happens as me you realize that there is no separation between you and spirit and you and others everything is one it's divinity that's a journey to go there we're not definitely not going there today but that is the four states of consciousness and what you wanted to want to be aiming for if you do truly want to be in quantum flow and have things start to happen easily like doubling your business so the way that I do this is through the armor process and where we start is with the vision of who you want to become. We set your avatar. We truly deeply see that person you want to become. So people, when they visualize, they often visualize the scene. What about the person who's created it? What about her emotions, her um, actions, decisions, habits, rituals, I help my client to see the avatar of the vision that they want so that we can create that identity shift. We then have to identify what are the armors that are blocking you from her, right? Every single experience that you've been through your, in your life where you fall down and it's hurt, you've picked up an armor and you've put it on to make yourself feel safe. Just like me, creativity is dangerous. Okay, I'm going to put this armor on. And the armor is some sort of personality, some sort of character, some sort of habit that is completely unauthentic to your truth, inauthentic to your truth, but it makes you feel safe. I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to be creative. I'm going to try a different way. I'm going to conform. I conformed. I did the whole career thing. You know, I remember being in my career and actually getting into a position where I could have a little bit of creativity holy macaroni, I would sit there for three hours after work, Googling other people's creativity to make sure mine was okay. I'd compare, I would edit and change it to something that was already created because if it was already created, that was external val validation that what I was creating was okay, right? I mean, now I know, how ugh, it's just ridiculous, but we do these things, expression, not, not speaking your truth as an armor. You said something when you were younger. I remember being, you know, maybe 11 years old and I was at school and I was asked to go up to the front and share something. I don't even remember what, but all the kids laughed at me. And, I, I, you know, you, you remember, you remember what that feels like. And it's those feelings that are coming up in the present day. And they will stop you from taking an action. You're going to post this amazing social media post about your story. And then this feeling comes up and you go, oh, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Or maybe you write it and then you spend three hours editing it. And then suddenly creating content is really hard and time consuming. Do you know what I mean? Do you see how these armors, they're, they're weighing you down. They are blocking you from your highest version and we have to take them off. And as we take them off and as we see the ones that we've already taken off ourselves, because we're all on a, on a personal development journey, we see where we've, we've developed our own processes like this to help other people. So taking these armors off has to be part of your business strategy because then we can take action and we can take inspired action, intuitive action, aligned action action that you know who who right here right now has been in a position in their business where they're doing something in a way that deep down doesn't feel like them you're doing it because somebody has told you to do it and it's worked for somebody else and on the inside of you it's like your skin's crawling it's like this really doesn't fit and when you do it your way you do it in quantum flow you do it quickly you do it effectively and you do it in a way that is magnetic to other people because of the energy in which you do it. So number one, consciously choose who do you want to be because, and I believe that we have a soul goal. I believe that there's something written in our DNA that, you know, has, it's a soul's path. It's a soul's truth. So when we are wrapped up in all our traumas, we're unconsciously choosing. And this kind of reflects my, my fight experience. I was drawn to it, but I was doing it for the wrong reasons. It was an unhealthy expression of how I was feeling. It was an identity that had some things that definitely, you know, light me up. But I'd chosen that as a, as a career path. I was, I was competitively fighting. I was putting myself in danger for the wrong reasons. 
and it and it was protecting me from what I truly wanted to do because if I was in the gym and I was doing those fight camps well I couldn't be focusing on my business so it was a good excuse so what are those armors that you have And what is the action that is going to create the results that you actually want with ease? For me, I always teach the personal story formula. You've got those armors for a reason. Let's understand how they create your content that attracts in your ideal audience with ease, that lands with them so powerfully that they jump into Messenger and they say, can I work with you? This happens to me regularly. I've made, you know, multi, like, um, yeah, like, $30,000, $40,000 in a month just from a couple of posts on social media. It's so powerful to share with people from an authentic place. You have to, you have to understand yourself and you have to understand your audience and you have to understand how those two things connect. So there's a process there, but it's powerful action. That action is aligned to me. I believe it's aligned to you as well because you feel like you have a story and it's the reason that you came into business. You want to help people to get through what you have overcome. So with the right tools, I believe that you can double your business because you're going to be able to ask for a higher price. You increase your enoughness. You let go of all of those self-esteem issues, that imposter syndrome, the feeling like you can't create the result, the feeling like, you know, um, like me, oh my God, well, if I double my price, then I'm going to double my, holy crap, then my business is going to fall down. The world is going to end. All of that money is going to go. Do you see the, the subconscious train wreck? You'll be able to ask for higher prices. You're not going to have those visibility wounds or they'll become, you'll become more neutral to them and you'll show up with powerful content. You'll communicate clearly. Who feels a lack of clarity right now about some area in their messaging and marketing? It blocks you so badly and it is never that you haven't got the right strategy to work out the, the thing that you want to share. It's you don't understand yourself enough or you're in that imposter syndrome. So you'll be able to communicate clearly with more authority. You're going to get over your excuses. You're going to be able to say, oh, okay, I just felt that little bit of procrastination, but I'm going to do it anyway because I have the right state and I know how to move my state. I know how to get over my nerves. I know how to get through my procrastination. I know how to ditch my cell inertia and show the fuck up in a way that my future self does because I'm committed to her and not to this baggage in the past anymore. You're gonna take more risks because there is no risk because you're the one who gets up and creates. You can create anything and you're gonna believe that as well. You can have easier conversations in the DM because you're gonna feel more ease. You're gonna feel easier. You're gonna have less of these stories. Oh, but she can't afford what I do. Oh, but she's way better than me. Oh, but oh, you know she's probably already working with a coach excuse my language and cover the baby's ears, fuck that shit. Get in those DMs and start talking to people that you can help. This is not about you. This is about them. And we are at the moment when we are absolutely wrapped up in these emotions. It's like we're a candle sat there with the potential to light and show the flame, the flame of hope, the flame of change, the flame of difference. And we're not setting the light to that candle so nobody can see that you're there. To me, that's a travesty. So we want to create the identity shift and we want to create quantum flow. Instead of praying for everything that we don't want through our energy, we want to become the energy that calls in everything that we want, the opportunities, the people, the synch- synchronicities. We want all of it. It can happen so freaking fast. You can become a man, ma- magical, like just what's the word? Like um, that's oh, gone. But you can just start to manifest things straight away. The universe will always give you what you can cope with. So if you build up your resilience, if you build up your enoughness, then you're going to manifest faster and more. So going across to the science a little bit and just Rebecca for you, like here is that scale. 
This was from David R. Hawkins, who writes the book Power Versus Force. When we're up here in unconditional love, peace, joy, gratitude, kindness, we are in power. We are empowered and we are powerful. It may be that just like me, your biggest limiting belief and story is powerlessness. And there is a ripple effect from that belief out into everything that you see in the world, the way that you see the world, the way that you see other people and how you show up as an identity, how you act. If you feel powerless, then you're gonna, you're gonna be controlling out here on that outer ripple. You're going to not trust if you see that people are untrustworthy. When you are powerful, you can do anything. and nothing, nothing else matters. But to do that in the right level of consciousness, we have to do it through unconditional love. I went through a phase where I was like, well, I couldn't fix you, mom, so I'm gonna fix the whole world. And I was angry and I was like trying to force it. I was trying to force people to change. I've changed everyone. It's easy, come along and do it my way instead of compassion. Oh my gosh, like, you know, even the work that I've had to do even very recently with, with my mom to see her through compassion, to understand that she was that little girl too. That everything she learned and every single way that she has treated me, my brother, everything that's happened, she only learned it herself through her bad experiences. And that's sad. Suddenly that anger was grief, her grief, my grief, processing emotion, allowing those emotions to transcend, to transmute into unconditional love. You can do whatever you want to me and I'm gonna love you anyway. And I'm gonna do it all in peace. I'm gonna find every single thing that I love and I'm gonna do it. My business is gonna become a vehicle for the lifestyle I want. My joy, I can get paid for it. You know, how do you raise your vibrational frequency from these places where 60 to 70% of your day, you are worrying about money. You are worrying about where you're gonna get your next client from. You're fearful about your bank account. You're fearful that somebody might say something if you post this thing you really wanna talk about. You are angry at the, you know, this guy was dr driving behind me in a van. I'm a terrible driver, I completely admit it. And I felt very sorry for the poor bloke because I totally pulled out on him, I did. He went nuts. Like I honestly thought he was gonna pull the van up next to me and like pull me out of my car and and, he was so angry. He was so angry. I was like, wow, that's a lot of anger, you know? But people are like that. Oh man, that, that, oh God, even the traffic lights aren't turning. 60 to 70% of your day, you are creating what you have. It's not what you want. How do you change it? So I'm just gonna check the time. Oops, and flick back. Yeah, we've got time. So what you're going to do very quickly is you're going to grab a piece of paper and you're going to do one, two, three, four, five columns and about five rows. In the first column, you're going to write feeling. In the second column, you're going to write I am. In the third column, you're going to write affirmation. In the fourth column, you're going to write anchor. And in the fifth column, you're going to write habit and trigger action. So then you're gonna close your eyes. 
Now you're going to breathe in for four through your nose. Out for eight through your mouth like you're breathing through a straw. And then you're going to hold at the bottom for eight. And then you're going to do it again. And as you breathe out this time, I want you to focus on relaxing. Your shoulders, your neck, your jaw, your feet, your hips, your legs. And you're just going to sit in that space for eight with breathlessness. And you're going to do it again. Out for eight. holding for eight and just noticing how all of your thought files are realigning to create space. In three breaths, you've created space. And as you go back to your normal breath rhythm, maybe you feel like yawning. Maybe your tummy is even doing a gurgle or two. This is your parasympathetic nervous system switching on. Just breathe and focus on the space. And then I want you to bring up into your mind's eye a movie screen with that picture that stirs such emotion in you of your future self. That place in the future where everything you want is Everything that you want to achieve, you have achieved it. Notice the feelings as you see the detail of this vision. What are the feelings in your body and where are you feeling those feelings? Allow that movie to play out. Just a few scenes those pictures that stir emotion, the things that you are doing, the places you are going, the people you are talking to, whatever is relevant for you, see that movie play out. And then I want you to switch off the screen and come back to the space. And I want you to ask yourself, how do I feel in my highest version, in my unlimited success, in my unlimited bliss, when I am in unconditional love, when I am living my life with ease and grace? What are the feelings of your future self? So you can open your eyes and you can put down three to five feelings that are really obvious to you, really obviously an identity for you. Something that, some things that that future self is feeling. I then want you to wrap an identity around that feeling. So for me, one of my anchor feelings is freedom. And an identity that really stirs that emotion for me is I am nomad. I see myself in that travel, in that ease. What is an identity? What is an I am statement that can govern the experience 
that will play out through that emotion. Write down your three to five I am statements now. And if you struggle, leave them blank because you can continue this after the session. We then want to come up with some confirmations of this identity, something where we, when you say it, it lights up that feeling and it confirms that experience. It is done. It is done. I am a nomadic free spirit. It is a, is it, for example, the feeling of love, my I am identity, who I'm being is I am loving, compassionate, and understanding and present with myself and others. But the affirmation is abundance is how I feel. That helps me to come back to that place of truth. How do you come back to the place of truth? Through an affirmation. Another one on the love for me is um, I look at everything through the eyes of love, with love, and I love everything I see. You know, what is an affirmation that just can bring you back to truth, your truth? Write out those affirmations now. Now we want to come up with our anchor to create the feeling in any moment, but also to make those feelings part of not tomorrow, but today. How can you change your daily rhythm so that you're creating these feelings every day? You're in the vibration of your future self and you're attracting that future situation to you. What is an activity that brings up that feeling for you instantly that is accessible so it can't be, you know, if you want to feel healthy, you can't have it as the gym because you might not be able to go to the gym. It needs to be something that you can drop and do, like my stop drop meditation yesterday, right? It is feeling my anchor feeling, feeling of presence and connection. I wanted to connect to myself right then. I also want to connect to my children. So one of my anchors is playing, jumping on the trampoline. Come on, Bowie, jump. Let's go. You want to come up with, a, with a, an anchor that becomes part of your daily rhythm, but is also your SOS. So when you're off there, woo, I'm doing this thing that my old person did. I can pull in my anchor and I can anchor in the feeling of what I want instead. So breath work is an anchor for me. Again, if you're struggling to come up with any, just leave them blank and, and allow yourself to really dig into the activity after the session. And then finally, we want to notice our bad identity showing up, right? We need to know our trigger habits. 
a massive trigger habit for me based on old identity and old beliefs is scrolling my damn phone. So if I find myself scrolling, I'm like, well, hello there, bad habit. Am I doing something that is creating income in my business? No, I'm not. Okay, so what's the trigger? What is the, 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 um, the trigger action, like the, tri the change? This might be your, one of your anchors or it might be something different. And you can ask yourself, okay, I have a trigger that is taking me away from this feeling and I do it a lot. It might be a bad reaction. It's like the bad habits where we have to shift. We have to, as Joe says, <laughs> break the habit of being ourselves. This is how observation, acknowledgement and doing something different. So I want you to come up with the trigger to know that you're in your old identity and something that you can do, you can ask yourself, do I go to my anchor activity? Is that, is that actually relevant, possible? You know, sometimes like, you know, jumping on the trampoline, it might not be possible. So it's a good anchor activity and it's going to bring me back. But is it something that in the moment I can just very quickly shift my, 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 my vibration? And it might, so you're going to have two things in that, in that column. You're going to notice the trigger and you're going to just acknowledge that it's the anchor that you go back to. And I just do a little arrow in the column, or actually there's just this something different. It's just a quick shift. Remember, we're changing the emotion in the moment. We're changing the reaction and we're coming from the avatar's place, coming from the place of the future self. And all the time, you know, you can use your affirmation to help you to take that different path because you suddenly start to feel differently and you connect with the vision of your future and how much you want it, how much is at stake. So really this starts to build a new daily rhythm, which is you showing up in a different energy. So you can build those affirmations into 300 affirmations a day. Three times a day, you can stop and affirm. You can record them and listen to them. Start to reprogram your subconscious mind. Reprogramming your subconscious mind is not fully possible in my eyes without some trauma release. So other emotional biohacking is asking that question, how do I integrate trauma release into my business strategy? Um, other emotional biohacking is setting a morning and evening ritual that means that you rise and you go to bed in the energy of your future self. You start the day in the right energy and you end the day in the right energy, having powerful morning and evening rituals. Learning to respond as your avatar would. So in any situation, don't say, how do I respond right now? It's like, how would she respond? Would she say yes to a 20 grand program? sweet, I'm in, <laughs> you know, like break that programming of the past that tells you it's a, it's a risk or it's a, if your heart is screaming at you, yes, yeah, she would say yes, then start to act like she would and make that investment return to you. Integration, what I teach in, in a few of my programs. So um, changing state, breath work, yoga, um, neuros other neurosomatic work. And the question is, for me, if you are not doubling your business right now, is this why? And would a process to bring you, you and your clients into energetic alignment with their desired reality really serve you right now? If it would, I would be absolutely excited to jump on a, a call and talk about the Quantum Leap intensive framework that I created, which brings this entire process in, this identity shift in, this journey to quantum flow, which is going to attract your prosperity to you and allow you to fully live on purpose in an entirely new perception of your, of your life backwards and forwards.
there is a process towards that I've built into a framework with multiple tools that you can use to transform yourself and transform your clients. So it brings together neurocoaching, trauma healing, neurosomatic therapy, energy work, quantum mastery, like what is quantum science and how do we apply it? Nervous system regulation, powerful integration, powerful integration processes that don't just turn your business around, they transform your health. Quantum biohacking, again, taking that shift to a cellular level to grow your business and improve your coaching as well. I have worked this process through with hundreds of people now and it really, really works. And it was beginning of last year where I really did want to start helping others to have a framework that they could apply to their healing, helping businesses so that people start having faster results because people really get stuck and they stay stuck for a long time when we can actually quantum leap. What is a quantum leap? I mean, if a quantum is just the, it's just the, the micro tiny shift, it's the tiny, tiny shifts that we get stuck on because of the identity that we carry around, right? So that is the quantum leap is the identity shift. Taking that to a practical place of, well, how does that actually happen? How do I break the, the habit of being myself when I have carried this internal operating system around with me my entire life? How do I change it? How do I change the habits? How do I change who I am to come back to my truth? So these are a few testimonials. Stacey was just a, an amazing client to work with, especially because of, and she will say this as well, her age. You know, she really felt like her identity was cemented in. <laughs> like she, you know, and that was what was keeping her stuck. She wanted to show up as a coach. She wanted, she'd spent thousands on different coaching programs, worked with incredible people, but was taking none of it out to market. Um, Kate had such deep childhood wounds that were really blocking her in sharing authentically what she wanted to do she is just that she has this beautiful expression but it wasn't going anywhere she couldn't get visible at all Claire had the idea of a coaching program and we took that to a tangible coaching business in eight weeks and she signed up five clients immediately to bring her business into into income and Stina was one of my toughest clients and I almost lost my belief in myself with this one because we were about seven weeks in of an eight week program and we still actually hadn't got her business into any profit at all. And I was like starting to have the beads of sweat. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So we just were in a subconscious session one day and, and she brought herself back to this um, this, this image came up of her being sat at the dinner table and her dad came home from work. Her dad was hugely successful. And they were all the family around the table. And he, she was just like, he was talking to her. He was passing her the salt. He was, and then his phone rang. And so he picked up the phone and said, sorry, Stina, this is more important. And he got up and walked away. And it just, that was where she just went, oh my God, I believe that I can't have a family and my business. And we were through the block. <laughs> so, you know, it's amazing the stories that you have and you don't necessarily see them and you don't see them straight away. But when we overcome them and we neutralize the feeling that are associated with them, everything's going to change. Um, I say that we all have scars. They either mark us or they make us. And this lady right here, what would you say to somebody who is in the, is a testimonial of that. Judith was abused as a child. And she was so heavily abused that she didn't even remember that she had been until very, very recently. It all came through the subconscious sessions. I want you to imagine being in your 30s and suddenly realizing that the reason why you don't have memories of your childhood is because they're so painful that you can't bear to remember them. And Judith moved me so much because not only have we doubled her business, We've completely transformed her life and her relationships. And mm -hmm. she's helping others in such a profound way now. And she's expanded her vision as well. She's gone from wanting to help people with their emotions to actually wanting to create world peace. 
and change the financial system and help entrepreneurs to become the trailblazers that that is in their dreams and their hearts. So I asked her what she would share with somebody who was sat on the fence of taking this step into this internal work. And this is what she said. Position you were in, either right before you came into You Unleashed, that one-to-one where you were really seeking that visibility. And to the person who maybe has got that visibility now, still needs that strategy, but knows that there's more as well that needs to come through more of that ease, more of that peace, more of that vibration of attraction, less doing, more being. What would you say to either of those people, both of those people about working with me? (laughs) Well, to answer that question, I can make that really easy if you're listening now and thinking, because if I look back at my last 13 months, not only have I doubled my sales, so the income of that time is doubled compared to before, I have published a best-selling book. I'm about to publish the second one in June right now. I've up-leveled my clients. I have launched a group program on top of the one-on-one. So that is just KPIs that came as a result from working with you largely into both programs. So if anyone is on that journey as well, stepping into higher income levels and creating more impact, being more visible and being clearer on what you want to communicate, who your ideal client is, then work with you. That is that it is because you do that epic combination of all that energetic and the integration plus the marketing, right? Because you know yeah. the business and the people side. And that's yeah. just a really, really unique and really cool combination that just brings a 360 degree thing, your full circle. <laughs> the full circle, the name. So going back to that candle, you are a candle of hope. But you got to set that flame up, you know, and it doesn't just impact you. It impacts your clients when you have your own internal transformation. Every single transformation that I have internally ends up helping my clients. And now that I have the process to work through that really quickly and easily so that my vibration is constantly getting higher and higher and higher and higher, You know, that again is impacting my clients. And like I said at the start and and what I shared in that post, these traumas will come up. They're coming up on purpose. They're coming up because it is time for you to take that next level. But to take that next level, you need to let that identity go. So that is me. And if you would like to chat about the framework, the Quantum Leap Intensive is starting again on um, June 9th. Orientation starts on May 24th. So I'm inviting calls now to chat and see whether it is, um, it's going to help you. So you can DM me on Instagram and you can follow me on Instagram as well. I love being over on Instagram. Um, DM the word quantum and I'll know to chat back and organize that call but does anybody have any questions or anything quickly that um, has come up for them or they feel they want to share anything like that oh my god I definitely would Claire that was so so sorry I'm feeding the baby she's just having an absolute meltdown in the last 10 minutes where I was really hoping to sort of jump back on and chat sorry I've just had to turn my camera off um I was so interested in what you were saying I mean first of all how is your brother and because his little sweet face so I was like oh I hope my brother's okay is he okay he's not okay no he's oh, in no. the U. and I think <sighs> and that's the difference isn't it yeah you know like you can go this way or you can go this way and my brother is heavily addicted to alcohol and drugs lost his children um He's yeah. I I totally resonate with that because I have a sister as well that uh because obviously you know my childhood was quite abusive too and um she's like been sectioned and all it's just so sad to me because obviously you know it hasn't like say it hasn't come from parents you know um encouraging us to go on these journeys but we've done it for ourselves we've we've there must be something in us innately that has known that there is there's got to be more to life than just 
pain and trauma and when you do the work you know things can get so much better and it's so sad when others aren't so I'm so sorry to hear that but there's two um, sides of our brain and I think the, the the moment you this is survival brain back here it's got all of you know the reptilian brain the limbic system and then you've got this beautiful neocortex up the front yeah the only that like so simple to switch out of one to the other and it's by asking a question that's why coaching is so powerful and if you don't have a coach a coach approach in your business already freaking get one because and get a quantum coaching approach even better because then you've got all of that like I say all of that other stuff taking the body on the journey the nervous system the health the wealth whatever but the minute you get somebody to go from I can't afford it to how can I afford it <laughs> like, yeah. like oh my god I've got all this shit in my life is there something better yeah you're starting, you're starting the process of change my brother just literally lives by everything that he learned from my mum and my dad. This is happening yeah. to me. Everything's really hard. Everything's very dramatic, you know, and he has these, these the alcohol and the drug as, drugs as, as the crutch. And I'm not saying that I also didn't have those crutches, but I gave them up for the chance of a better life. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things, the biggest things I've had to get over is to let go of that. I cannot drag him to the point where he wants to, he has to want it for himself. And sometimes we really do have to hit rock bottom to come back up. And I know I've, I know I've hit rock bottom a couple of times. I've, I've looked upon his rock bottoms and thought they're rock bottoms, but maybe they're not yet. Yeah. But that learned helplessness, isn't it? But also what you said about identity, he's operating from a place where it's just who he is. It's just his life. There's nothing he can do about it. Um, and it just is what it is. And when you instead make, you know, operate from a place of what if and, you know, your future mm -hmm. self, um, you'll have a completely different outcome. So that was just so interesting to me as well, though, about the compassion, because I've realized like I've done a lot of healing in expressing compassion for my mum, because I think. Uh, like you say, like she was operating from a place of of what she, you know, what her story, but I haven't been able to extend that to my ex-partner. And it's interesting, isn't it? As women, we really find it hard to forgive men. And and yet they're, they're, they were children at one point, you know, and I, that just was quite interesting to me as you were saying that. I was like, wow, I can really, you know, be really compassionate with my mum as another woman, what she must have gone through in order to be in such a hurt place to act from from where she's my ex-partner because for some reason we it's harder to forgive men does anyone else agree with me on that yeah do you sam yeah we love to get together and talk about how shit men are but some and uh, that was just like a, but that, a brand that, that could also be programming you know it's like you've yeah. got to ask yourself where did where did you learn that what experience taught that the well, my mom she hates men as well but like you think about what did you watch as a kid home and away neighbors coronation yeah. street who taught who who's like we're not in our free will i completely yeah. agree with you like i and, and mine's a present relationship and we've had some real struggles but what i've realized is those struggles they are a massive suitcase and they'll hold like the suitcase is attached to your ankle and you're trying to you're trying to thrive in your business trying to stride through your business it's literally hanging on yeah it is it's you so want true freedom you gotta cut the tie to the suitcase you know and spiritually actually I have to look on my brother and you have to look on your husband uh, on your ex-partner as them having a human experience and we don't get to actually say whether it's wrong or right mm. like, that's freaking yeah. tough well we've manifested <laughs> some know? element of, of it in some way haven't we like you say like what you're drawing in you know they're just doing them and we've just called them in. So why are we then making them wrong when That's actually, um, you know, it starts, everything starts and stops with us, doesn't it? So, and they are coming yeah. in to reflect something in us so we can rise in consciousness. So yeah. our energetic value can increase. Like, you, you know, I say people are wanting to make money. I'm like, well, actually take your focus off making the money and put your focus on how your energetic value can increase the money just has to match yeah it's true when you're not showing up and serving I think to your fullest potential that's when 
um, even just like uh, imposter syndrome and a bit of self sabotage because you know you're not being true to yourself. You know you could be doing more and you're not. And that's right. Imposter like, syndrome is so not many about levels. being an imposter, right? It's like actually I just don't know myself enough. Again, yeah. get through that trauma, release that trauma that has told you those whatever it is that you're believing that you're not good enough, that you're not smart, that you're always wrong. Suddenly, you're not an imposter at all. Your enoughness has increased, and you're like, sweet. <laughs> bring it on right it's like an imposter syndrome is that's not an, an impo- it's you just need to increase your your knowing about yourself and your enoughness in here like bringing it all back that's where your power comes in and you stop forcing trauma is absolutely a shield 100 percent. yeah it's also an excuse. <coughs> uh, it's, um... a really good excuse to not you know and I used to even say things like um like I'd kind of put pronouns that suggested that I owned it, like my anxiety, my rape, my, do you know, like. I've got a tattoo on my wrist that says damaged. Who puts that on their body and thinks that that's going to empower them in any way? Like, and every time I go to give change (laughs) to somebody, they can read it because it's upside down. And I'm like, hello, this is how I define myself. But I thought I was taking my power back in owning it. But actually, yeah. it's just a constant reminder, isn't it? It's not very empowering at all. Sorry, I'm trying to yeah, wrestle with the What a beautiful story. Like, what a beautiful story. Oh, bless. Sam, would you like to um, sort of unpack, unpack that suitcase a little bit more while I... <laughs> oh, the baby's not very well. Yes, yeah, Sam, jump in. I'm not sure I dare. <laughs> the, 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 I, I, I know I'm pretty fiery. I'm pretty passionate. And, um, but I, you know, only because like I've done, I've, I, I've been the biggest victim to my circumstance that probably exists. And so I say it with such compassion to, to try and give people a rattle and say, I'm kind of sick of this. And there's another way to be so like there's there's absolutely no judgment because if I if I judged you I'd be judging myself and that would feel really rubbish right so it's like you know there is absolutely no judgment and only compassion and what I see as well is that people who have trauma they've had it on purpose because you've always had this soul path you've always had this destiny to help others and you can't reach that full potential without going through some stuff to really make that and you know that energetic value increase those learnings those that wisdom that true you know we go through school and we're meant to go through school and get qualifications to go out and make change in the world that there's nothing compared to lived experience and hardship and, and those relationships that have had damaged us. And, you know, it's so powerful. Your trauma is your superpower. It honestly is. I definitely feel like my last relationship is the one that sort of changed everything. Because that was when I started with the whole um personal development listening to the podcasts and reading all the books and I can look back on that relationship and I can see how the fact that I didn't love me is why he didn't love me I mean he wasn't capable of loving anybody um but that's why I attracted him because I didn't love me yeah what beautiful reflection yeah, we do, and we we attract what we need at the time as well. So again, it's that identity. But it's somebody posted the other day about gratitude, and they were quite fiery, like me, around. I don't advocate for anybody bringing gratitude in as a tool for healing. And I sort of put my two cents in that well you can't just say to somebody, oh, you know, you got abused, be grateful for it. That's not what we're saying. But ultimately, if you can come from that place of healing, like you have to heal before you can then bring some gratitude in, but would you be where you are today and who you are today without those experiences? It's like, it's there, there has to be some, there has to be some gratitude for the blessing and the lesson 
It's not that you're saying, oh yeah, I'm grateful that that guy raped me and ruined my life. Like, absolutely not. But it's like gratitude for yourself, isn't it? Gratitude. Like, you've absolutely. been through some shit and you've come out the other side. What a fucking woman you are to still be standing and raising such a beautiful little girl. Like, and I've realized, Sam, how much you look like your daughter. Your hair yeah. with, when it's down, you really look like her. <laughs> the absolute woman. Woman. You yeah. wouldn't have come on this path as well. So our trauma brings us into alignment because our trauma wakes us up and says, ah, okay, if I attracted this situation in based on the beliefs that I have, is it a coincidence that I was raped when I believe that I'm powerless? I had this moment where I was like, <laughs> oh my God, that hurt. That was confronting. You know, I attracted that situation in based on the energy that I was putting out. You know, wow. I had that question, why was I the one that was picked? Why was I the one that was picked? I was drug raped. Was I the one sat on that chair in that bar that night with the energy of complete powerlessness, like pumping out of my body? Yes, I was. Doesn't mean it was my fault. It means I was yeah. carrying a story and, and, a, and, a, and a trauma. And, you know, having worked through, I'm now able it's like that's what again same as my mum connected with me with me with the desire to coach that brought me back into alignment with myself when like you know that took me into such misalignment that woke me up to I don't want to be part of the system I don't want to be in the matrix I don't want to work for somebody else I don't want to <laughs> you know I'm like a rebel at heart I can't I'm absolutely unemployable now it's like, but it, that's, that's I'm a lie. I think that's how we've been attracted to each other. I was yeah. on a with Ruben the other day and she's actually a lawyer and she's like, I feel like I might want to give my job, give up my job. And I was like, yeah, I'm that friend. Like, yeah, do it. Give up your job. <laughs> get like, go traveling, <laughs> leave your husband, like all of these things. So I'm like, yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> oh, but I am interested, Sam, actually, why you would want to obviously continue with that trauma, though. I know you said it's a shield and and sometimes these things can be self-serving and that they keep us safe um, from perhaps going through any more trauma or perceived trauma, i.e. putting yourself out there to meet someone else. But knowing what you know, what you know, why would you want to keep hold of that shield? Let's release those shackles. I think because it's safe, whereas letting go of it that's that whole unknown god knows what will happen sort of Something area this, this is where the, this is brilliant right so this is where the quantum leap intensive will completely transform your life because we start at we don't start in your trauma because this is where people like me who was like exactly the same i'm completely safe with this armor on there's no way I'm taking it off. I didn't even care that saying the safe meant the same. I didn't. Do you know why? Because I couldn't see the vision of what I wanted clearly enough. I wasn't connected enough with that feeling of actually living my truth. And there's a potential that you aren't either. And so the start of that framework takes you into that connection to your authentic truth the feeling of your vision the aligned vision as well the unlimited vision because what you might be seeing right now is a limited vision too because it's thought up and our thoughts from a limited from place us, from a limited place yeah. right so, like yeah. you know I, I don't see today in my vision what I saw 12 months 24 months whatever ago right it's like some of the things I see today I'm like holy wow <laughs> from like you know like wow I could do that I didn't even know I wanted to do that like I'm not thinking up the vision anymore the vision is coming to me through those yeah. processes so we have to open up the vision we have to expand the vision we have to change the feeling so that you know what's at stake I was I was gifted that blessing of losing that reality show because when I was on that reality show I might have sucked at all of this I don't was, know what this show is Claire you look like it so what, casually um so it was called play to win and it was like a network marketing version of the apprentice so we were given all of these sales tasks and stuff now i i mean i was i had so little self-esteem and confidence i don't even know how i ended up there it was just ridiculous and i obviously failed in all of these tasks but what i was doing around the corner when everybody else was falling apart and you know you can imagine the drama it was like epic i coached and I had multiple people come. I got clients out of that. People came to me. They were like, Claire, your ability to coach is epic. 
<coughs> you've changed something for me that I've never been able to change. I've just felt this different thing. And I was like, for the first time ever, I was like, I could coach. I could be this coach. And I started to see that vision. I was like, wow. And, you know, um, I had this vision of becoming the female Tony Robbins. That was what I sort of saw and never ever felt like it was ever possible. You know, I couldn't even show up on video, <laughs> couldn't do this. I said to my um, admin just before this call, cancel the webinar function on Zoom because I used to hide behind the webinar screen. You know, it's like, I don't need it. Just take it off. I don't need it. So we have to open up your vision and we have to realize what is at stake before we start working on your trauma. Otherwise, you're just going to want to stay in that shield. What's going? There's, there's no desire there. There's no, there's no carrot dangling. It's just like, I'm quite happy where I am. Thank you. And that's what we, and this is what makes you a better coach. Because if you know this process and you go through this process, you can use this process with your clients. Have you ever had a resistant client? How much did they suck where no amount of dragging to them to the water makes them drink? We'll bring yeah, through the I, I, I attracted one of those recently. It was just, it was so hard for me because oh. I'm such a like, um, like go big or go home. It's like, so I just want to do this little thing. And I'm like, no, let's double it. Let's triple it. Like, let's to get somebody that's like just constantly like I felt like I, I, I almost came out with cock blocking then but I was just like oh my <laughs> god how have I manifested you like your dress is so cool so again the like, self-knowing process you can help to identify the people who will because again so there's a there's a tool that we use that's a personality profiling tool that helps to identify where you are wearing identities that actually aren't your innate version yeah because those people you want to attract in because actually if you connect them with their desires their true desires and you you shift the feeling enough they will go from being resistant to you know st they're just showing up in a way that isn't authentic they're just used that's their armor yeah control or resistance or whatever it's like so powerful so so powerful so yeah yeah i would say discover their framework jump on a call let's see if it is something you don't have to use it with other people but you can use it on yourself it's going to help you to to let that go in a safe environment you know the the um yeah we work through these processes in a very intimate way it's not like massive group calls and whatever else but also having that understanding of what's what's of what trauma is as well and how it's holding on to you and how it's not stuck on by gl glue, it's there by Velcro really helps as well. What a lovely way to put it. I love that because just so many people feel defined by it, don't it? It's like that learned helplessness that this is just the cards that I was dealt and that's it. So I love it. Um, Sarah, Riemann, Jessica, if Joe's still there, do you have anything you want to share? Or sort of any aha moments, observations, anything for Claire? To be honest, I've just been enjoying listening to everybody else's stories. I could tell you mine, but we'd be here all day. So many different <laughs> and I can talk as definitely <laughs> Ruben, uh, Sam and Beck know. So I've just enjoyed listening to everyone else for a change. Sorry, I'm not How being really... How do you really feel about either. it though, Sarah? Has it um, changed like your perspective on any of that though, your trauma? Because we've all got, like all women, we've all got a story, haven't we? Yeah, it, it does. I've never really written it down before because I don't really journal, believe it or not. I've been told many times I'm more of like a visual, physical person. Like my way of release is like exercise, like physically yoga, gymnastics, like whatever I can physically do. Um, meditation but I don't really enjoy writing things down that could be something to do with trauma that I don't want to see on a page um, I think before in my past some like trauma for me was like I've had really bad relationships but they were very intrusive into reading what I was doing <coughs> I really still don't like writing a lot of stuff down because the person would then manipulate that from what I'd written so it's still I, I'm aware of that though so I'm still working through it but I've still don't enjoy writing anything down you don't you so the personal story formula doesn't require you writing stuff down it just gives you a formula to for expression through social media knowing what to share and how to share it yeah 
the trauma process you've got that. a little bit of trauma though around that haven't you Sarah I'm always pushing her to be because yeah. Sarah's like living up like my, vicariously I live through Sarah so she is always off like around the world like living that digital nomad lifestyle and she built her business for in Bali from a phone so That's she's cool. I'm always like so we need to do this thing Sarah like where in the world what time zone do you think it might be in she's like I don't know and obviously from somebody that's got five kids I'm like I can tell you where I'm going to be six months from <laughs> Thursday and I probably what activities or school run I'll be on um oh, but I'm even you enough. have like she's <laughs> I know she's almost <laughs> like so um you're almost like too humble Sarah I'm like the people that aspire to have the life that you do, like you really struggle to to speak it about it and just be like, yeah, I, I make money and I travel the world and I live my best life. It's almost like you you shy away from really leaning into that. And I think that yeah. comes from being visible and, you know, some of that trauma. So I'm like, we yeah, need to get that out. Naturally, I can show it very well. Like at the moment, I'm sharing whales. You know, it's like something different. <laughs> the people, you would be surprised at how many people like watching me gorge walk up waterfalls yeah. and stuff. Like it's like little things, and you think it won't interest people, but it does. But I only find it easy to really talk about my journey when I'm asked. Like I'd never visually just be like, oh, yeah, so I got stranded in Singapore. <laughs> visa run like it's just not something like someone would have to ask me like oh in Bali which part was it you was in because obviously for me now we're talking about it I was there in the rise of Bali 2017 to 2020 when lockdown begun and they're like oh well how did you do it and then it's like you can mention all these different things what cafes there what weren't there but it's just not in me to basically be like oh hi everyone yes I had no money left a job sat in Bali and hoped for the best and oh well here we are <laughs> five years later still running an online business traveling the world going back to Greece next month but you know and it literally I know it sounds like blase and that is me taking the mick out of myself but I do struggle to actually tell that story I just find it much easier to go live and be like, so guys, today I'm going to help you with this. Grab a pen and paper. Let's move on. If, it, if it's working and you're hitting your income goals, why change something? You know, this comes up for me two questions. It's like, is, is, there a, is there an avenue to get even more income and more reach and more exposure? Because when you share your story, you really deepen your personal brand. You really accelerate yeah. trust. Um, you can also tap into different markets and create new income streams, especially for you, because if you are creating income, then you've got those offshoots and those passive opportunities where you can do lots of low tickets that are digital yeah. for people who they'll hear your story and they won't pay 15 grand for coaching, but they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll take the 47. So, that you know, you can ask yourself that question. Is there opportunity through my story? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm always getting then down time. here is like is there something that I'm holding on to that is bringing my energy down, my energetic value down? If I let go of something, is it going to bring me closer to energy and further away from matter so that I am manifesting more easily, more regularly? You know, it's like more ease, more peace, more bliss. Like you, I would be asking those two questions. Absolutely. Yeah, how many people do you know have like made a business you know made a little bit of money on social media and now consider themselves a strategist like you're actually living the digital nomad lifestyle and yet you don't want to tell anyone about it I'm like that's really powerful stuff because mm -hmm. it's and you're going to help other people to do the same so I always think selling is serving isn't it are you yeah. on YouTube no I'm not I'm getting into YouTube at the minute though YouTube um, would be a really good place to be as well absolutely like yeah I started looking at the shorts first, like literally, and a lot of people have realised this with me now. My superpower is stories. I'm quite a good story. Ironically, teller. but not your own. <laughs> yeah. That you yeah, mean it, so. Um, so I'm try I'm trying to move into that space now. Um, I have been speaking with my friends that uses YouTube, but it's not something that I've actually started doing yet. It's, it's a gold mine. It is massive potential. It's a search engine. So when we look at social media, we're interrupting people's background searches. So if you imagine you're not on social media searching for a coach, you're not. However, you've got a bunch of shit that you need to fix. And so you're actually what we're doing on social media is all desire driven. We would be drawn to 
you know the pictures of you walking down the that's why you know it's a desire I want to get out and walk down a gorge it's triggering something emotionally in me I'm good I'm curious yeah you know so where a lot of people go wrong is they're talking to people's problems online actually you need to talk to their desires and you need to be the representation of those desires through your own identity shift right you need to do the shit that <laughs> you're telling other people to do and so we catch them by accident it's an interruption of normal daily life. And they're like, oh, actually, this person has something that could help me. Mm -hmm. So um, on YouTube, which is powered by Google, they are searching. So yeah. there's real power there to become somebody's resource and be found really easily and to get followed really easily and build your lead machine through those descriptions, those funnels, that automation. And you can bring personal story into your videos as well to keep that um, view rate high as well. Because people do just are like, oh, no, 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 they just check out where a story keeps them checked in. So massive opportunity in YouTube for you as well. But personal brand wise, storytelling, reach, exposure, like I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so Thank you so much food for thought for me. Amazing. Well, I have to jump off because I'm starting yeah. to get anxious that I can't hear my one-year-old. And yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. there is a husband down there, but I can't hear him either. So <laughs> <laughs> they've tied up your husband. <laughs> There's a mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my god thank you so much Claire for your time this has been amazing and I know obviously it's like first thing in the morning for you over in New Zealand um mm -hmm. but for us this is like the perfect like moment like now to reflect before bed like I think um expect some DMs in the morning definitely yeah. um, but just thank you so much for giving your time I really appreciate it and it's such important powerful work that you're doing so keep shining your light doing you I will obviously be in touch mm -hmm. um and yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. You're so welcome. And if anybody yeah, wants any breath work, give me a shout. I'd love to share the breath work with you too. That's a massive tool. So yeah, that's one of the quantum tools, but so good for changing state. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Claire. Honestly, so it's well. been lovely. And thank you ladies for joining us. Bye. 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 Bye.